Moving over. <laughs> Section three. One of the things I wanted you to know is that you can use triangles or you can use the unicircle to answer the questions that you have below. Like when I looked at the examples that you had to do and I was looking at cosine of 120 and the sine of 240 and the tangent of 225, I was looking at those and I thought to myself, why would I show them just with triangles when sometimes they might want to use the unit circle? So I wanted to go out of sequence because I wanted you to know you can use these right triangles that we learned in section two or you can use the unit circle that's in section five. That's why I decided when I was making these notes to go out of order because you have more than one option. And then I thought to myself, you know what, there is one other way to do these kind of problems besides the unit circle and besides the right triangles, and that's this. And I was looking at a teacher from Clovis North. I was looking at her notes. Um, I'm going to give credit to Mrs. Compton from Clovis North because sometimes I go and I look and see how do other teachers teach it and because this is my first year teaching it. And so I thought to myself, let's see what she does. And this is like option number three. We have unit circle, we have right triangles, and then what Mrs. Uh, Compton does is she uses a special right triangle with the radius of two. And I looked at that and I said, well, that's interesting. The unit circle has a radius of one, but this is kind of nice because if I'm doing problems and I think about it in terms of a radius of two, everything's easier. Let me show you what I mean. Here's what you've learned in section 7A.2. If you think of this, is this the same thing as that? Is it equivalent? If S was root 2 and you plug that in right there and you get root 2 times root 2, do you get 2? Does this work by plugging it into that function? Mm -hmm. It's, so that means it's going to have the same ratios as all 45, 45, 90 degree triangles. Matter of fact, same thing here. If S was 1, then 2S would be 2, and this other side would be root 3. This works for all 30, 60, 90 degree triangles. Well, what does that mean? That means this. If you have the sine of 45 degrees, the opposite over hypotenuse, do you know what the ratio is going to be? If you know this triangle, you can do all your trig functions based off of these ratios, and it will already be rationalized for you. So I thought that was kind of neat. I thought, man, that's kind of interesting because that's this is still going to be the same thing as the ones that we have on our unit circle. We have our unit circle way, we have the radius of two way, as well as special right triangles. Let me show you one more example of the, of the 45. If I, if I was doing the tangent of 45, opposite over adjacent, TOA, root two divided by root two, which is one. That's the same answer as it is on the unit circle. It might be easier for you. Same thing over here. If I have the sine of 60 degrees, that's the opposite over hypotenuse. It's already rationalized for you, root 3 over 2. If we had the cosine of 30 degrees, here's the 30, the A over H, root 3 over 2. So this way might be a little easier for you. And so I wanted to show you these two special right triangles because it's another way to do the problems that you've been doing. Now scrolling down. The, there are some questions in your homework that are going to say, what quadrant is it in? And you're going to say, oh, it's in this quadrant, it's in this quadrant. And then like the 90 degrees. The 180 degrees, let me just write those down. The 90s, the 180s, the 270s, or the 360s. If I'm talking about 90 degrees, is that in a quadrant? No, it's in between quadrants. So how are we gonna label those? 
they should be labeled as the axis that they are on. 90 degrees is on which axis? It's on the y-axis. It's not in a quadrant. So when you're asked what quadrant is 90 degrees in, I want you to say that this is on the y-axis. And then this one would be the x-axis. And this is the y-axis. And this is on the uh, x-axis. Just so you are aware, they are not in a quadrant. The third thing that we wrote down, besides triangles in that sentence, was this little thing that I have told my AMA students before, and I'm going to tell it to you because it's quite common in the math world to know this acronym. The acronym is All Students Take Calculus. I have a friend of mine that is a math teacher who used to teach in Bakersfield. He now teaches in Utah, and he says, I hate all students take calculus. He says that he taught his students, all students talk crap. I go, what? And uh, he says that. He goes, yeah, because all students talk crap to each other. I thought that was awkward, but I've remembered it till this day. So, I mean, does it work to remember? Okay, yeah, yeah, it does. What does it mean? What does it stand for? It stands for this. All sine of theta Cosine of theta and tangent of theta are positive. That's what it means. All of them are positive in quadrant one. S stands for <coughs> sine of theta is positive in quadrant two. What does that mean? That also means cosine is negative and the tangent is negative in quadrant two. But these are the ones that are positive. T. All students take the tangent of theta is positive in quadrant three because the sine is negative and the cosine is negative and a negative divided by a negative is a positive. <laughs> Lastly, what's in positive in quadrant four? Cosine of theta is positive. These are the ones that are positive in those quadrants. It's an easy way to remember what is positive in the four quadrants. If that helps you, <coughs> use it. If it doesn't help you, stick to what works. For me, sometimes I just go CS, positive, positive. C, C, S, negative, positive. C, S, negative, negative. C, S, positive, negative. If that works for you, do it that way. <coughs> just ways for you to remember because the hardest part is when you're dealing with an angle, what quadrant is it in? That way you know whether the ratio is positive or negative. Now, being able to do things fast makes everything easier. If you memorize that unit circle in section five, doing these problems will become really, really quick. And some of you look at that unit circle and say, oh my gosh, there's too much there to remember. I can't remember all those things. Well, for those of you that need a way to remember how to do the unit circle by the palm of your hand, I have a trick that I stole from some teacher off of YouTube. She explains it. It takes a really long time of how she explains it, but I try to do it really quickly. And so I call this Mr. Promo's hand trick, but I did steal it from somebody else and I don't remember her name, so um, I cannot give credit to her. She was on YouTube. Uh, there you go. So here's what I do. I treat my hand, my finger like this, and I treat each finger as an angle in quadrant one. That this angle is zero degrees, this angle is 30 degrees, this angle is 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. Right now on this picture, you are also going to see uh, radian measures, which you are not going to learn until section six. But I put the radian measures on there, and that is something that is coming up in a future lesson. Right now, I only want you to focus on the degree measures of the angles. Each finger on your left hand represents the quadrant uh, one angles. To find the angles ratios, go to that angle and fold it down. Count how many fingers and plug it into the square root of fingers over two. If you look at your unit circle, 
if you look at your unit circle and you put your hand just like this, I'm going to uh, highlight my hand right there in this video. If you fold down this finger, which is 60 degrees, if you look at the left side of this, call this the comma, it's one. Square root fingers over two. How many fingers? Squares the square root of one over two. This is your cosine. If you look at your unit circle, let me just draw a quick one right here, like this. Here's your unit circle, one, two, three. If you were to go to 60 degrees, this is what it looks like. How many fingers? Divided by two, there's your cosine. Guess what this is? Square root of how many fingers? Over two for 60 degrees. It works every single time. If you wanna go to 45 degrees, square root of how many fingers? Over two. What's the sign? Square root of two over two. If you go over here to 30 degrees, Fold down 30 degrees. How many fingers? The square root of three fingers over two is your cosine. On the right side of the comma is one over two. It even works down for the zero. If you fold this down, you have zero fingers divided by two for your, for your y value. And for your left value, your cosine, you have the square root of four fingers, which is two divided by two, which is one. It works for that and it also works up here for 90 degrees as well. It is uh, 0 comma 1. So that is a way for me to know what all the ratios are for the unit circle on my hand. Now remember, you can use the triangle method. You can use the radius of 2 method for the special right triangles or if you like this hand trick, I, I use it all the time. As a matter of fact, earlier when I was showing you um, answers to problems, I was double checking when uh, the student who asked me the questions, I go, okay, 300 and I subtract it, I got 60 and I figured out the ratio based off of the hand trick. I use it even to find those answers. So I will show you how it works for other problems. Do you remember how uh, the last thing I would show you with this, let's say I was doing 150 degrees. Remember what that rate reference angle is, the theta prime? If this is 150 to get to here, what's theta prime going to be equal to that we've talked about on the previous worksheet? So all I have to do is go like this and know that the reference angle is 30 and then I can count and I already know the ratio for 150 degrees. It's root 3 over 2 and it's 1 over 2. And then what I can do is if I'm asking for the cosine, I know it's negative in that quadrant. If I'm asking for the sine, I know it's positive in that quadrant. And for the tangent, I know it's this divided by this. Garrett. So you always go off whatever theta is? Go off of every time you go off of what theta is. Otherwise, you can't do it. Okay? So here, I'm going to post these notes to my website. If you want detailed instructions, this is my detailed instructions for the hand trick. Feel free to use it if you want to. Otherwise, you're going to be drawing lots of triangles, okay? All righty. Now, when I teach, if you are a triangle person, you're going to have to remind me that and I will help you with the triangle method. But otherwise, I will be using this method for myself because then I don't have to draw a whole unit circle. Here are the four examples that we are going to do for our notes. Feel free to put your notes off to the side. If you would like to pull out your worksheet, you can do these with me on your worksheet. Here's what you're going to have to do. Number three says the cosine of 120 degrees. The first thing you have to do is sketch what the angle looks like. So what I'm going to recommend you do is that you draw a 
I'm going to pull out some... Uh, come on. Come on. There we go. Whoa. Where did it go? I lost it. There it is. That's what I wanted. I need to draw another one of those. I'm going to draw another one of those. And draw one more of those. <coughs> Come on! All right. Now that I got those, I have to do 120 degrees. So the first thing that I draw is where is 120 degrees? I know that this is 90. I know that that is 180. So 120 degrees is going to leave me with about, oh, look at that, 60 degrees left right there. This is 120 degrees. All I really care about is this red arrow. Do you have to draw the arc? No. But what I'm showing you is, by drawing that, is that 120 degrees it goes here, and then I know what the reference angle is. Reference angles are found by subtracting or adding from 180 degrees. If this is 120, how far is it from 180? I can find the reference angle by just doing that. <coughs> and now I know this what the reference angle is. It's 60 degrees. What quadrant is this 120 degrees in? If you want to be fancy, you can use Roman numerals. Otherwise, just put two. I'll accept either one. And then the last thing it says is evaluate. What's the trig ratio? So the first thing I do and I don't know about you, but because I don't like to make mistakes, I go, is the cosine positive or negative in quadrant two? Is the cosine positive or negative in quadrant two? All students. Well, that's not an S, so it must be negative. I do that first. Because the first mistake, the most common mistake students make is they forget to check the sign of the ratio. And then guess what I do next? I go like this, and I go, oh, 0, 30, 45, 60. I fold it down, and I go square root of fingers over 2. Oh, I know what it is. That's how fast it is for me. Pretty simple. Do you have questions? For everybody else who does not use the hand trick, what you are <laughs> going to need to do is you're going to need to do this. You draw the triangle. You are trying to find the cosine. You are trying to find this x value. And if you want to use the triangle method that we had up there, you could use the 2, the 1, and the root 3. And the cosine would be the adjacent over the, oh, and I forgot this would be negative because we went to the left first. You'd have to draw the triangle and you'd have to have a negative for your x value because you went to the left, which is negative on your graph. You went up, which is a positive root 3. And your negative divided by the 2 would give you negative 1 over 2. So those are two different ways you can actually do number 3. I just think my way is faster. Ready to try number 13? Let's do it. 240. From here all the way around, hmm, it's about there. What quadrant is it in? Three or fancy? One, two, three. Now, if 240 is over here, how far is that away from the x-axis, I'm going to subtract from 180, and I know that this reference angle is also 
60 degrees. Is the sign positive or negative in quadrant three? It's negative. Mr. Brahma goes over to his hand. He folds down 60 degrees. The cosine's on the left of the comma. The sine is on the right of the comma. And he goes square root of fingers divided by two. I know it's root three over two. Or maybe you were going to draw a triangle and you, since you know that this is 60 degrees, you have your across from here is 2, across from the 30 is 1, and then you have root 3. But don't forget that this one is negative because you went to the left and you went down, so that's negative. You're going to do the opposite of the 60 degrees over the hypotenuse, which is 2, and you get negative root 3 over 2, same answer. Ethan. So on a test, if we were to like show our work and we were to use the um, hand method, mm -hmm. um, how would we show our work? The best thing you could do is draw the arrow of where you're at and what was the reference angle. Now, if I know what reference angle you're using, I know what ratio you should be getting. If you use it, a lot of times the biggest mistake is some students treat this one as 30 when it should be this finger or vice versa. So literally showing that is the amount of work you can you could show it'll give you partial credit if you draw it number 19 225 i'm going to go faster this time i know it's in quadrant three i know the reference angle is 45 by subtracting it from 180 I know that the tangent is positive in quadrant three. Sometimes I'll put a positive just because I'm checking the sign first. Put my finger down and the tangent is the sine divided by the cosine. Root two over two divided by root two over two. It's easy, fast. If you don't like that, you might have to draw this out, 45. If you like the negative 2 and the negative 2 and the, I'm sorry, those are root 2 and then root 2 over 2. Don't forget negative and negative. Toa, this over that. Same answer. The last one we're going to sketch is number 6. I don't know why we did these out of order. Sorry. It's because I wanted something on the axis. I sketch it, it's pointing straight up. Is it in a quadrant? So what do we put? Perfect. It's not in a quadrant. It's in on the axis. It's in between quadrants. The reference angle uh, is, re reference angles are between zero and 90 degrees. 90 degrees is the very last number you can use. 90 degrees is your reference angle. It's the thumb that you would put down when you're dealing, if you're using the hand trick. What is the ratio of the sine of 90 degrees? Square root of four divided by two is what? That's it. I'm gonna stop your recording right there. <laughs>